Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the 8-Bit Adventures Podcast. This is episode 311, and I am your host, Sean Hayes, here to bring you the latest and greatest <laughs> gaming news of the past week. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, had a little bit of a had a little bit of a scare getting this started. Uh, my stream deck uh, was not responding to button inputs, um, uh, but I was able to get that straightened out before uh, it was after I started streaming. After I pushed the go go live button and before I did the intro sequence. So thankfully, that's why I added that five minutes of like the stream is starting. Um. Audio listeners, you, you have no idea that this happens. Uh, <laughs> so this is this is only for people who are watching live. So that part, that all stuff gets edited out. But yeah, I was a little worried. I was a little worried that I would go to push the button to do the intro, and uh, and nothing would happen. But everything's fine. That's great. Uh, have a nice, cloudy, cool Saturday here at the at the the home studio um and we've got we've got some fun news this week i'm so glad like there were there was a couple things of like layoffs um although sag after after got a big win um you know they got another studio to sign their agreement um over uh ai um usage uh but there's enough like fun news this week that I was like, no, we we got to do we got to do fun stuff. So, um, yeah, I uh, uh, World Within <laughs> continues to be really great. Uh, I think Blizzard did a whole bunch of great stuff uh, with this expansion. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what I've been doing in my spare time. I don't have a lot of it. Uh, these days anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, and you know, work got busy <laughs> as we're we're in the middle of our big contest season, and so you know, it's it's basically like every day there's like two hundred entrants that need to be moderated, kind of a thing. Um, so uh, and. New D&D Player's Handbook. Uh pretty good. I got to say, you know, regardless of regardless of the rules inside, uh the the page layout, the book layout so much better than the 2014 one. Um and the and the art's so much better. <laughs> yeah, it was just in like the best art in the 2014 PHB uh was like from fourth edition <laughs> so all right uh but enough about that we've got we've got six news topics for today and so or well for the week so why don't we get right into them All right, so first up, IGN reports that patch 7 for Baldur's Gate 3 has been released. The, this is uh, the latest major update. Um, it will include a, this one. This is the one. Includes official mod support. So, so mod support baked right into the game. Uh, and I know there, it, it, mods are very, very popular with this game. <laughs> for, for good or ill. Uh, We'll also include legendary actions, new legendary actions for several NPCs. Make your honor mode runs a little more difficult. Um, and uh, for those of you on Santa's naughty list, there's a whole bunch of new endings to support your evil playthroughs. Um, a lot of folks, uh, when the, when this news first broke, you know, when it was first released, we're saying, oh, this this looks like it will likely be the latest the, or the last major content patch. And then yesterday, Laren came out and said, nah, nah, we we just the, the chefs need more times to need need more time to cook. So uh, so this will not be 
the last or the the final patch. Um, it's just they may take a break to go work on other stuff or to think of new ideas or to, to just take a break. I mean, they, they earned it. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to go back and do another playthrough. I put 200, like 250 hours into my first playthrough and it's like, I don't, I don't know if I've got it in me to go back and do it again. <laughs> Uh, and that was from start to finish. That wasn't, you know, um, you know, I think I have a couple other playthrough. Like I have a multiplayer playthrough that I do with some friends of mine um, that like we kind of did like one or two sessions. Uh, but I'm I'm not one to basically like start do a playthrough, get tired by act one and then finish. it. I did do that with Divinity. That happened a lot with Divinity of like getting through act one of Divinity Original Sin and then other stuff coming up and then falling off the game and then going back and like just restarting and doing act one over and over which like for that game act one is like that could just be a game <laughs> like act one i think in divinity the first divinity original sin um was like 35 hours uh so yeah that like that's that's a full-fledged game so uh, but yeah, so, you know, we'll have to see what, uh, what more stuff Larian could come up with in the future. Um, you know, and who knows, maybe, uh, maybe there's folks at Wizards of the Coast who, like, on the internal team and not the Hasbro team who are, you know, trying to push for repairing that relationship, um, you know, after basically the, the licensing team all got canned. <laughs> so. Uh, and then for our next set of news related. More Baldur's Gate. Uh, this is this is for D&D Beyond specifically. Uh, Wizards of the Coast uh, sent out an email um, yesterday or a couple, couple days ago. Um, so every month, if you are a D and D Beyond subscriber, you get subscriber benefits. It's usually in the form of like you know custom virtual dice or character backgrounds or whatever, like character sheet backgrounds or whatever. Uh, so this one, character sheet backgrounds. So this is you can change the the background graphic of your character sheet. You can change the frames and stuff um, as a way to customize it. So this is to change the background, uh, featuring art from. Uh, some of the magic cards in the 50th anniversary secret lair drop, um, which uh, feature Carlac and Asterian. Um, so, uh, notably, one of the one of the pieces of Asterian art is inspired by uh, heavily inspired by Jeff Goldblum, um, in Jurassic Park. So, uh, if you're a D and D Beyond subscriber. You, you get those <laughs> uh, and that's included in your subscription it's not like a it's not a microtransaction type deal so uh yeah um unfortunately so it's only two pieces of art for each one um and unfortunate for for carlac uh it's not the the thrill of possibility art um it's uh so one of them is stranglehold so the card stranglehold. Um, I don't know what the other card is. Um, and then uh, Astarian has that art. And then I don't remember which one. If it's Sanguine Bond or the other one. Uh, but he's basically going going for for a little nibble on Shadowheart uh, and the other art. So uh, those are available now. Um, They've also added uh, character background art from the new player's handbook. Um, it features a couple of like the pieces of art from the backgrounds section. So, um, yeah, those are available now. That was that was kind of a last minute addition because um, I shared that with my friends group and I was like, guys, you, you got to check this out. <laughs> um. 
it's it's just the Asterian art's just so over the top. And I I know there's probably people out there who are looking for that. So next up. Uh now this one uh is from the official PlayStation blog. So for anyone out there who who thinks that this is just like, oh, this is just a Nintendo pod, Nintendo and Dungeons and Dragons podcast. It's like, no, no, I, I do pull in from other news sources. It's just they often don't have like worthwhile stuff talk to talk about. Um, but this one, uh, the official PlayStation blog reports that uh, the Dragon Quest three uh, HD 2D remake um, which I square right up there with their naming conventions again. Um, we'll have a new job added to it. Uh, Monster Wrangler. Now, I love Pokemon games. I love, you know, monster battler games and stuff. So this, I, I'm super <laughs> excited to hear. Um, and like Dragon Quest and Dragon Warrior. Uh have a story tradition like there there are like monster battler games in that series so i'm glad to see like a kind of return to that um what this job will incorporate is so it'll have like a bunch of stock skills you know that you know, basically kind of function like other magic skills it's just that they're monster themed um the big thing is uh there will be friendly monsters hidden across the world that if you have a monster wrangler you can go talk to them and uh get them to join um like your arena team and then they added like this monster battler arena where um you set up a team of monsters and they like auto battle against other teams of monsters um and you get some kind of rewards and loot and stuff for it um but yeah monster wrangler uh i i always love when they when they do a remake and they add new content to it. Um, so I think that is notable. Um, one thing to note, although this news came from the PlayStation blog, this game is releasing on all platforms. So this is not just a PlayStation exclusive. Um, but it's also the only place I found that this was, <laughs> this was mentioned. So, yeah. Uh yeah, and I think that releases pretty soon. Um let's Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake. Come on. Release date. Uh November. So November 14th. Um, so might be a good uh, pickup on Black Friday. Next up, this is a minor tidbit of news, but it's Legend of Zelda. So um, IGN reports that uh, Nintendo did confirm. They put their foot down and they confirmed at uh, Nintendo Live 2024 in Sydney uh, that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are not part of the main Zelda timeline. Uh, they instead, the two games, so, you know, Tears of the Kingdom, take it, it's confirmed it does play, take place immediately after Breath of the Wild, but those two games take place uh, in their own separate timeline. So now there's a, a main Zelda timeline, which has three branches, and then there's an offshoot timeline, which is just Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, this, it, it's... This isn't any sort of ground shattering news or anything, but it's Zelda timeline stuff is like a very contentious topic in the Zelda community uh, and the Nintendo community at large. Um, so it's like, I got to include this. And this has been something it's not new information. Nintendo has said this a couple times before, but like people insist on trying to put Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom somewhere in like the main timeline. Uh, so Nintendo actually putting their foot down and being like, it's different. We're going to show you an infographic. Boom. And they, they do like the full timeline with like all the games. And then there's like the two little <laughs> switch ones out uh, down in the corner. 
separated out. Um, yeah, and Nintendo themselves, like, it, it's important to note, unless the game is a direct sequel, like Tears of the Kingdom or Majora's Mask, Nintendo doesn't care about the timeline. They don't. They've said before, we don't think about the timeline when designing a game. We just make the game. You know, and we might put Easter eggs and stuff in there, but we don't intend to slot it anywhere in the timeline. This is entirely a... And, like, for the fact that Nintendo, to acknowledge what it was essentially a community, like, fan-made creation, and then publish it, um, is pretty notable in and of itself. That's not something you see them do. Uh, but it's now kind of turned into this big, giant monster of a thing. So, uh, yeah, they they are separate. So... And you know what? I think that's fine. I think it's fine. Um, you know, I, I also, I'm okay with stuff just being Easter eggs and references as opposed to trying to figure out, like, to, to perform mental gymnastics to figure out, like, oh, but, you know, uh, if this takes place in the future uh, and the Great Sea was here, but th th but there's also both, you know... Uh, like if Gorons were nearly extinct in uh, the the Wind Waker, uh, how how are they now thriving in Breath of the Wild, which is supposedly post Wind Waker, uh, or how are they both Zora and Rito? Um, yeah. Uh, and you know the short answer is it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It doesn't matter because they're all mostly self-contained stories that just fit as a broad series of collective tales about this land of Hyrule. So, uh, yeah. You know, and some of them are intended to be like, oh, this is like an origin story. Uh, you know, like Skyward Sword is intended to be, you know, an origin story type thing. But. Also goes to show, don't do time travel. Just makes messes. <laughs> there's, if there's one thing that all media about time travel has taught us, is that time travel is messy and you just make, even if you do everything right, you still make messes. So don't do it. Don't. Uh, for audio listeners, I'm pointing at the camera. Um. So, uh, and oh, speaking of, for things that were inspired by the fan community, this is perhaps my favorite news of this week. Uh, Polygon reports that the enormously uh, open world space exploration game No Man's Sky, the infamous No Man's Sky, which is now pretty good from what I understand, uh, has received an update uh, titled Aquarius that adds fishing. <laughs> This was, I saw this in my news feed, four articles for the podcast, and I went, who has delivered this perfect piece of news for me? <laughs> uh, the update uh, was inspired, so like the last update came out, um, which was Worlds, I think it was called, um, where it was basically sort of like a big update to the engine and how like worlds are generated and, and how they look and everything. Um, and then a, a fan oh, and I, I, the article didn't list who the artist was. Uh, so I apologize for that. Um, and I also don't think they posted the original art, but there was a piece of fan art of explorers like sitting on the wing of their craft and like, uh, just fishing off the side of their uh, spacecraft because um, part of that part of the world's update was like also updating like the the water engine and how wa uh, water looks um, so now this is sort of capitalized on that and do like activities that revolve around the water and stuff so they put in a whole now granted from what I saw in the trailer I it's not a complicated fishing system we're not talking Stardew Valley or, you know, Breath of Fire 3. Um, 
or or even uh, Link's Awakening. Like we're not talking anything like that. It's it's you know basically you catch a fish, you click, you catch it. Like or like you hook a fish. Action button prompt. If you get it in time, you get the fish. So you know very Animal Crossing. Uh, I mean, if, if if it's sort of what I consider to be the simplest form of a fishing system um where it's essentially a quick time event uh however they also build around you know there's bait there's missions they added you know cooking uh the fish so uh yeah this is this this right up my alley uh to be clear uh for those who are are new listeners who haven't been listening for you know a long time uh i love fishing mini games in in you know broader games i don't like fishing games <laughs> like i i don't like fishing sims but i like games which include fishing as a side activity and for me it's uh you know if it's just a quick time event okay not super thrilled, not super excited or thrilled about it, but you put it in there. It it checks the tick box or it it ticks the check box for me. Uh, but the more effort you put into it being like its own thing, and like the more arcade style you make it, where it's it's not just simulationist. Uh, the more fun I have with it. And the more you can gamify it, you know, because like Zelda does like a lot of Zelda games do fishing, um, you know, and, and sort of the mainline ones. Um, actually, come to think of it, I think it was just Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess, you know, did. Not quite simulationist, but it's sort of a, a we'll call it a stylized simulation of fishing, you know. I I do enjoy that, but I much prefer when you do like an actual little mini game out of it, like like Stardew Valley does. I think Stardew Valley is the pinnacle of fishing mini games. Um, still have to play Breath of Fire three. I'd imagine that one is also pretty pretty high up there. Um, so, uh, yeah, for them to add this in the game now, it's like instead of being like, oh yeah, you know that's a cool thing. I'll probably never play it because you know it's got now it's like. Put it on the list. Put it on the wish list. <laughs> Get this game on my PC. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. And for game devs out there who happen to come across this video or audio podcast uh, and, you're, and you're listening, you want me to play your game? You put fishing in it. <laughs> Figure it out. Figure out how to put fishing in that game. Uh, and and don't just make it like Bass Pro Hunter or, you know, uh, or just a, a button click, you know. I, I will also say um, I, I also appreciate when it's like a different concept from the base from like your the rest of your game. So, you know, like. Fishing's a big part of Pokemon. Uh, I don't think it's very engaging because it's just another way to trigger Pokemon battles. You know, possibly a hot take, but yeah, I'd rather have it be a different system and do other stuff than just oh, it triggers a special battle. Um, with the exception of if triggering a special battle is a very rare event for your fishing game. So, uh, but yeah, this is, it, you know, includes a bunch of, so for No Man's Sky to get back on topic, a um, bunch of equipment so that you can do all sorts of fishing expedition type stuff, um, you know, different bait, new things to cook. Um, I think eating fish dishes might give you some sort of benefit, um, like a fishing catalog and, you know, register, uh, and then just as a way to just chill out and just hang out and 
you know, the world ends up. It's a very clever way of getting people to stop for a moment and then just like be able to look at the scenery that they put so much work in revamping. Um, I, I think it's very clever when companies do that. Um, less clever than say, you know, Blizzard forcing everybody to go to, you know, ground mounts back at the start of every expansion to force you to look at the scenery. Um, but giving you activities that you want to engage with that force you to slow down and look, um, I think is very clever. So, uh, yeah, and that update is out now. <laughs> so, go check it out. Especially if you already have No Man's Sky. Go check it out. Go back in. Our final bit of news, speaking of the old World of Warcraft, uh, Kotaku reports that the legendary, abs th this player's absolute legend. There's very, so I don't know if there's many players that reach a level of status where even casual, like World of Warcraft players have heard of them. Um, but player neutral agent who I'm going to give a little bit of backstory a uh, couple of expansions ago I don't remember what year it was this has been 20 years of Warcraft so it's been so long uh, when Mists of Pandaria launched a big thing was Pandaren characters start out neutral with respect to the Horde and the Alliance and this was back you know when you know, doing Horde versus Alliance was still full swing. Um, they were neutral. And you go through your intro starting quests, and at the end of that starting quest, the two sort of main Pandaren NPCs that you are questing with end up with a difference of ideology. And they go and join, like one joins the Horde and one joins the Alliance. And it's kind of based on, like, who ends up helping you and who they interact with. Um, and then you make a choice of whether your character joins the Horde or the Alliance. And it was very, for, you know, a, a single peoples or people uh, in Warcraft to be able to join either faction was like unheard of at that point. Um, so this, it, it was a big deal. What most people didn't realize was that there is technically a third option, which is that you don't pick and you remain neutral. And that's what neutral agent did. And uh, unfortunately, it means that in order to progress past like level 11 out of. I want to say it was maybe like. 90. or it might have even been like over 100 at the time was the level cap, um, that in order to stay neutral, you couldn't leave the, the starting zone. Uh, and which meant that your options for leveling became very limited. So neutral agent reached maximum level while staying in the starting zone. And he did it... Uh, by uh, mining ore and picking herbs and gathering herbs. <laughs> um, and sadly, Blizzard won't let you get experience for fishing, which is an absolute travesty since every other... Uh, well, since, since you get experience for crafting now, uh, and you get experience for, uh, again, gathering ore or herbs... Um, you don't get it for gathering leather and stuff because Blizzard thinks double dipping on experience for killing creatures is uh, is too much. Um, but yeah, so they hit the level cap just by going around picking flowers in the starting zone. Um, so that that's the background of Neutral Agent. The news is they hit max level again. <laughs> so... Uh, it's been the case for every past couple of expansions where at the start of the expansion, they knock you back down 10 levels. Like there was a level squish to bring um, 
max level back down to, I think they brought it back down to 60 at the time. And then they've steadily been increasing the level cap again. And then, like, they'll knock you back down 10 levels or so. Um, occasionally at the start of an expansion. And then you regain those levels with, like, new abilities. So, uh, so yeah. They've hit level 80, which is the sort of level cap in War Within. Again, they haven't left the starting zone. <laughs> and they're still, he's still just mining ore and picking flowers. So this is this is mostly a, a salute to neutral agent. Maximum legend. Uh so yeah. And that is going to be our episode for this week. Thank you all for joining me. Whether whether you watch uh you know whether you watch the video version, whether you listen to the audio version, thank you for spending some time. Uh, if you would like to see more content from 8-Bit Adventures, you can check out the website at 8-BitAdventures.com. If you'd like to help support that content, which includes comics, podcasts, um, I mean, it's mostly comics and podcasts at this point. Uh, you, the best way to do that is to become a patron over at patreon.com slash 8-Bit Adventures. Don't sign up through iOS. Do it through the website. Um, patrons get benefits for as little as a dollar a month. So, uh, big shout out and thank you to all of the current patrons. Thank you for your continued support. Our opening theme is One Up by Professor Shy Guy. You can find his work over at professorshyguy.bandcamp.com. Um, and he goes to a lot of like the, the various gaming, like nerd conventions, uh, so if you're at one of those and you listen to this podcast, like go, go talk to him, go thank him, <laughs> go say like, Hey, 8-Bit Adventures, you know, the 8-Bit Adventures podcast has been, you know, uh, has got like over 300 episodes now. Your song's been the theme. And to be clear, uh, I cleared it with him before episode one, um, of, of usage for that song, um. Yeah, and he was super cool with it. He's great. Um, so yeah, at least go thank him. <laughs> so that's going to wrap things up. So hope you all have a great week and a great weekend. We'll see you next time. And as always, have fun, happy gaming, and enjoy your pie cake.